back. I'm Naaman. This is the House of Nerdy. And today we'll be going over the new Loki finale that just dropped on Disney+. Plus. Um, I'll be giving my full thoughts on the episode and the season in whole. Um, if you haven't seen the episodes previous for this episode, uh, there will be major spoilers. So you should leave now. Um, with that being said, let's get into it. Starting off, I want to give a recap of the previous episode. Um, we saw Loki and Sylvie uh, finally reach the castle at the end of time. And they are trying to find out who controls the TVA and who's really meddled with their lives uh, to such an extent. And why? Why is this happening to them? And how can they stop it? And on another hand, you have uh, Mobius. And he's similarly trying to confront uh, Renslayer about her actions and the TVA actions. And he's trying to stop it, put it all to a halt. He's trying to basically free everybody from... Um, not knowing that they're all variants and that th it was created by like one person and the timekeepers aren't real that is basically a lot we're gonna start off by talking about loki and sylvie they um they enter the castle at the end of time that we saw at the previous episode like i just said and they are confronted first by miss minutes in a very terrifying jump scare scene that i wish didn't happen um i wasn't paying full i was paying enough attention i wasn't paying full attention i was paying enough attention at that moment to get scared i didn't like it but she basically offers them their own timelines to rule if they just basically turn around don't say nothing just leave it alone let uh everything happen you know let nature flow and They'll get their own timelines, and they basically just walk past her and say, "Ah, we want to know who has been doing all this. We we want to we want to talk to the man himself, you know." And I'm so glad that Miss Minutes wasn't the villain, and that they didn't have they just didn't start like a very weird AI versus Loki and Sylvie fight for like ninety percent of the episode because that'd have been odd. Um, but it was a nice little scene. And is kind of what I thought. I didn't think she was the main villain. I thought she was like, like one of his, but like a lieth or, or like a Renslayer. She he's just a uh, one of uh, the main villain's tools in his arsenal. Now Loki and Sylvie continue, and they are confronted by the man himself. You know him. I know him. We all know him. He is Kang, but not really. I'll explain. Um. He's not Kang. He's not a Mortis. He's not like Nathaniel Richards. He's like I saw in the subtitles. It said he who remains like. So I think he, they combined a Mortis and he who remains because Mortis is like who really care. Like we care about Nathaniel Richards and Prime Kang. That's really who we care about. And Rama Tut. Not even really. Really Prime Kang and Nathaniel Richards. That's what we care about. But. I think it more, but Mortis is one of the main ones because he is at the end of time and he's at limbo and he works for the TVA. So I think they combined him with he who remains, who's basically just an old timekeeper who was like just running the TVA and trying to uh, keep it from uh, keep it from like not well. He basically set the TVA up for the like when the universe died. He basically set it up so like the next universe. Um, the transition basically went smoothly that's basically what the tva basically what the he who remains does he just makes sure the universe is transitioned properly and smoothly and the tva happens and all that good stuff when the next universe happens after the universe dies but they combine him with a mortis who likes works for the tva and his main objective i His main objective is to kill Scarlet Witch. That's what the TVA told him to do in the comics. I don't know if that's going to connect to like with one division or anything. But in the comics, uh, Mortis was tasked with killing the Scarlet Witch by uh, the TVA because she was a threat. Now in this, they combined those two characters. And they gave him the backstory basically of a Mortis or Kang the Conqueror. They're the same person basically. So... They start talking, you know, and like at first, like Sylvie tries to hit him and they try to like fight him, but like he's like moving too fast and they can't hit him. So he just like dodges. So they, they, they give up. They realize they can't fight him. They can't use physical combat. And they basically just start asking questions. So then we cut back to Morbius 
and he's talking to uh, Renslayer. And she basically, he basically is like, you betrayed me. We were friends, right? Like, this is all fake. Like, what are we even doing this for? What about free will, man? Like a hippie, right? And Renslayer says, I didn't betray you. You betrayed me, right? She was like, you betrayed the TVA. You betrayed everything that you were taught, you know? Uh, you, you forgot the dogma. Basically, she was just like finger waving. They were both finger waving at each other. And then Mobius, I can call him, I called him Morbius for so long, didn't I? Dang. Mobius uh, was like, I can't let you leave, you know? We could work together. We could do like, but we gotta like let people know that they're all variants. We gotta let them know that the uh, timekeepers aren't real. Like, we gotta let people know they can't just be going in blind. I'm gonna say it's like, what if the lie was necessary though? Like, what if we tell them and like it all goes spiraling? He's like, who basically? Mobius is like, who cares? And like, he's like, all right. And then like, Rensei was like, all right. And then she's about, and then like, he goes to uh, stop her, with like, and prune her. And obviously, she's like, easily beats him because she was a hunter. And then she moved up to a judge. So like, she can also fight. And Mobius probably never fought before. So he, she easily defeats him. She gets away. And that's the last we see of Renslayer. Um, we also saw Hunter B fifteen. She was uh pro she was like in the process of like showing variants to the other hunters and people. So that, that's probably how they're gonna get acclimated to that. So going back to Loki and Sylvie, they're continuing their conversation with Kang, and like I said, he gave him the rundown. Uh, Kang Conqueror's backstory is like he was he lived in the thirty first century. In the comics, Doom created time travel. He used it. He time traveled back in time. He became Raman Tut in like, like a pharaoh back in like that era, and then he like just kept conquering and he kept creating variants of himself. So there's like a whole bunch of Kangs, right? And I think they were alluding to in the in the episode to the Council of Kangs, kind of like the Council of Reeds. You know, they were like using universes and like transporting goods and making sure like and doing all that good stuff. And like the Council of Reeds is even crazier. They, they got whole universes just for like food and like resources. And like that's kind of what they were doing, but just on a smaller level because King Conqueror does not read Richards. Um, so they go through his backstory and Sylvie's all in Kilma. She just wants him dead. Like she doesn't believe a thing he's saying. Um, he's trying to explain how he, there was like a whole bunch of kings and some and some of them aren't peaceful and they're like they they like there was a whole big war like a kang war and like he came out on top and he's like basically controlling everything and if he dies then those evil like bloodthirsty conquering type kings will come back and just wreak havoc on everybody like a whole bunch of and Sylvie just is not not taking it. And you can see like Loki, like he's like questioning him, and he's like like trying to see if he's lying or not. Like he's trying to lead him in this. Like, and Kang is just like, man, hey, I'm tired. I, I want to retire. Basically, I want to give it up to somebody who's young, you know, who wants this. Like, I'm just, I'm so tired. I'm, I'm old. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, there's like he just he he gives them the option that like they can take over the TVA right or or they can kill him and then the bloodthirsty kings like I was talking about come and he's like like a normal character he's kind of offbeat and weird and not like it's not like what we're used to but I think he did a good job and I think the fact that like he knew like once um because, like, his whole thing, like, one of his, like, things is, like, he knows that that's why he's able to avoid all their hits and stuff. Because he knows what's going to happen, like, up to a certain point. But then, as they're talking, the threshold, he says, like, it, it had to pass the threshold and he just doesn't know what's going to happen anymore. You can see him, like, he's lifting by Apple. Like, he just doesn't know what's going on anymore. Like, he doesn't know what's going to happen. And as you can still see, like, Loki, like Loki's, like, he's getting more intrigued. And Sylvie, she's just like, hmm, I don't believe a word of it. Like, not even a syllable of it. And you can just tell, like, okay, I see where this is going. 
and basically lays it out for him like that's that's what it's gonna be either kill me and a whole bunch of other ones or hey you can take it over and do it yourself until in sylvie she's just like all right and she goes to attack him and loki stops her and he's like wait 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 I don't think he's lying <laughs> and she's like huh like obviously and she thinks she he's trying to betray her and loki's like no no, no. is that really like no like I, obviously i'm not trying to betray you like we're talking about mo the, mo the the multiverse here like we're talking about our universe and other universe just hanging in the balance and if if you want to just go kill him and risk the chance of a whole bunch of kings and something worse coming uh, then you be you, but like, let's just think about it for a second. And she's just in full fight mode. And she's like, no, 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 no. Like, you're betraying me because, like, you want a throne and you want to rule time. Like, you don't, you, you're not, you're just, you can't trust you, right? And she just can't trust Kang. She can't trust Loki. And they fight. And it's a pretty good fight scene. Uh, Loki kind of holds his own, kind of. Um,. They don't really, like, like, nobody gets, like, hurt or anything. Like, they don't land any hits. Uh, he uses magic, pulls her and stuff. It was some cool use of his magic. He, um, like, um, vanishes and then, like, appears in front of her right before she's about to hit Kang. He says, Sylvie, Sylvie, wait, wait. And she's like, I gotta kill him. Okay, how do I kill him? In her head, she's like, how do I kill him? How do I get this man so dazed and confused I can get to, uh, Kang? And like get this get this guy out of the picture so they kiss and then after they kiss right she knocks him into uh like a time portal uh with the temp pad and now he's back at the tva and she's standing there with uh kang the conqueror jonathan majors he who remains whatever you want to call him and she then proceeds to stab him now as you can as you can guess she stabs him but and things have happened, but we don't, like, it doesn't initially tell you that. Like, you pick up with Loki, he's at the TVA, and he starts talking to Mobius. And they're like, um, and you, like, and he's talking with 100B15, and they're like, uh, who are you? And, like, they don't know who Loki is. He's like, this is, like, huh? Like, he's trying to explain to them, like, no, this is very bad. Like, something very bad just happened. Like, there's about to be a very bad guy, but, like, a whole bunch of bad guys are about to come and kill us. And take over our universe and like it's about to be very chaotic and bad and they're like who are you calm down like they don't they they just don't know who he is and he like looks over and those statues that had the timekeeper on it now have the prime king probably or a ver king variant right and that is oh, man that episode can we just talk about how crazy that is not only was king the conqueror in it he was in it for most of the episode. I think he came in like the 11 minute mark. And he was there for like most of the episode. Uh, we got like, like Jonathan Majors, I think, acted amazing. I think the acting was great for the character. Um, they really used the comic backstory. They didn't do drop, like name drop Doom or anything. He didn't say uh, uh, Doom created time travel and I used it. Like, no, nah, like, they, they avoided that. I saw that. Like, they skirted past the Doom line. They could have added Doom right there, but they didn't. But. I think it's just great to see Kang and after uh, Mephisto, or even for some people, Nightmare, uh, like, you know, in the Ralph Boner situation. And um, so a lot of people are just feeling like Falcon Winter Soldier. Like, I liked Falcon Winter Soldier. Like, it was cool. But, like, a lot of people just didn't, like, it wasn't hype enough. Like, it didn't have anything. It didn't have any substance. It didn't have any meat. It was just, it was just all bone. It was just nothing. Nothing was there for a lot of people. But now, Loki... This is six episodes of glorious purpose. All right, that's what I'd say. That's the exact summary I give this uh, season. It is. It's a great show. It it encapsulates Marvel at its finest. Uh, like so much, so much theorizing and speculation is going to be done. Um, nobody's talking about the head of the living tribunal just in episode five. I'm not over that. That means the uni the multiverse is dying anyways. No matter what happens. Um, but that's a whole different story. Like, I think that's like their first actual MCU Easter egg for Secret Wars. And nobody's talking about it. But I'm going to talk about it. Um, and this, like, 
just seeing like I think we could see I think they're gonna they're either gonna just show a lot of Kang variants maybe you know maybe we'll get like Nathaniel Richards after Ant-Man 3 or before Ant-Man 3 or maybe even in Ant-Man 3 um maybe we'll get like a Rama Tut in like Eternals maybe possibly can we get a Rama Tut in Eternals that's something I could look forward to um there was another thing so there were stuff in the promo that we didn't see like King Loki or Loki going back to like I guess the Avengers era and here here's a crazy wild theory and I'm 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 gonna, I'm gonna end the video with this what if Loki goes back to that timeline or Avengers timeline grabs Iron Man right and we get Iron Man versus Kang in Loki season 2 what if that's what they're planning for that second season? Like something ridiculous, right? Because Michael Waldron always says like he wants to have the best MCU thing ever. Like why not? Like why not best make the best Marvel project ever? And you know how crazy it'd be if they brought back Iron Man and he first came? Like Loki goes back because like it would work because like you just pluck him like like they did Loki. You just pluck him at his timeline. And you and because like who could be Kang? Iron Man could be Kang. Like that level of genius versus Kang. Like oh my god, that'd be so. Like Robert Downey Jr. and friggin' um, Jonathan Major. And we know that like they'll cast big name actors for a big name show on Disney Plus because Secret Invasion has like crazy actors across the board. So we know that they'll cast Matt Damon for a small role. We know this. They'll cast big name actors for small roles. They'll do it. So, like, what if they? Why wouldn't they bring back Iron Man in Loki season two? Why not? Why not? Can't fight you like Michael Waldron. Loki is amazing, and this I bet you this this last episode is rated so much higher than the uh, last episode, the finales of the other Disney Plus shows. Like the other Disney Plus shows, they had like pretty high ratings for most of the season, but both of the last, uh, like both of the finales had like we're in like the 60s. They were in the dumps, man. This is probably gonna be in the 90s, high 90s for me. Like it's in the 110 area for this guy, but. I'm going to leave you with that. Um, if you enjoyed this video, found it enjoyable, um, you found it valuable, you liked how I broke it down, you liked my thought presses about like, If you like anything about this video, come on back. Um, you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'm not going to force you to. That's just all your opinion. Um, and, yeah, I'm naming. This the House of Nerdy. Peace out.